Okay. I can take these headphones off now. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. For he is worthy to be praised. It's Easter time. It's supposed to be um, the fun. I know that's your favorite holiday. Favorite holiday. I love <laughs> Easter so much. I'm so excited. You got your Easter dress ready? No, not yet. Are you going to church? Oh, absolutely. My church is open. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I, I pretty much told my pastor, like, I'm not doing another virtual Easter. That's you, just... You can't do it. You can't take it no more. Yeah, I'm not doing that no I more. Feel that. I need to be in church mm -hmm. on Easter. Hearing that word in person. And seven last words. Like, Amen. I, I, need all, I need all of it. I feel that. I got to figure out what's happening, though, because, like, apparently, like, Brandon's family wants me to come for Easter. But... Cute. Davina and them are supposed to be coming for Easter. Davina's coming down? Yes, apparently. Is that why she's been texting us like crazy? Hey, I don't, yeah. Hey, girl. Hey, Davina. Hi. But, like, <laughs> I don't know. So, I got to, first of all, I need to know decision. if they're, like, coming. Because yeah. I need to figure out, I'm like, can we do a Saturday thing? Or can, like, we go to Easter Seven Last on Words? Sunday. It's on Sunday, the mm -hmm. Lord's Day. Yeah, but, like. The Lord's Day. Yeah, but so I'm saying, like. I'm going to be in church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, for Brandon, like, can I like hang out with them on that Saturday? You know what I mean? Oh, but I'm, it seems like they were expecting me to be there for Easter dinner. Yeah, but if like the, my cousins and family is coming. I hear you. What am I supposed to do? I feel you. Wow. I'm in a dilemma. This is what it's like to be in a relationship. I can't relate. I'm in a Good pickle. luck to you, sis. You'll make the right decision. You got it. Girl. Watch Brandon see this and be like, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> Good luck to you both. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to both of you guys with that decision. Because I know that's going to be hard. I mean, we're going to figure it out. You guys will. We're going to figure it out. You guys will. It's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine. It's going to be perfect. Mm. I think we can start the show. All right. Let's do that. Oh, man. Hey everyone! What is happening? What's poppin'? Episode six, I believe. Yes. It sounds good. We'll go with it. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm your girl Sierra T, and I'm your girl Sherelle B, and this is Head Wraps and Lipsticks the podcast, where we wrap the culture up in color. Yes, ma'am. Period. Period. Woo. Yeah. We got an interesting list today. Yeah, not too heavy. Mm mm. Scop heavy, but not Woo. like. And I got mad videos on here, so. Prayers up that it won't be taken down by the, the you know, for copyright strike. <laughs> but my, my thing is, like, how, if you're posting it, if you're posting something in the age of social media, like, mm -hmm. how are you taking stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, your yeah. thing is getting, it's getting shared. It's going viral. Mm -hmm. To me, that just, like, if you're a commentary channel or you're a channel who makes, like, you know, your own opinions, like the Fresh and Fit podcast and you're copyright striking Ooh. people. The only reason I'm bringing it up is because that was happened to us. If you've yeah. seen a couple episodes ago. Whack. Basically, you're embarrassed. You must be embarrassed about the kind of things that you're talking about. Yeah. And you don't want nobody else to talk about it or play clips from your show. I haven't seen them in a while, too. Well, that's good. I don't want to see that ball spot either. Ever. Oh, wow. Anyway, sis, mm -hmm. what can't you wrap your head around? Okay. I can't wrap my head around celebrities just dabbling in everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. All the, all the liquors are like by celebrities now. Like, I even saw my good sis, Sierra. I think she got a tequila now. Like, enough. Is that what that was? I saw just was on Instagram and mm -hmm. I saw her. Okay. Oh. Everybody has a tequila. I don't know if y'all have heard the, uh, got the Rocks tequila, Tr Tremana. Oh, Trem he has a tequila? It's gross. Oh, you've had it. Yes, it is horrible. Damn. It is not. It's cool to mix drinks, yeah. but to like, you know, take shots. Like if you're looking for a smooth tequila, like Patron mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, like Don Julio or Jose. You know what I'm saying? Like, but all these celebrities <laughs> dabbling in everything. And now y'all dabbling. Now they're dabbling in skincare. Like, have you actually done the research yeah. to see why your skincare brand is better than Lancome? Yeah. Neutrogena, Fenty, mm -hmm. Urban Skin. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because, oh, I'm Scarlett Johansson. And here's my skincare line. And I have skincare line. They let that Asian woman get a skincare line? Not that Asian Yeah, woman. she has a skincare line now. Selena Gomez has a skincare line now. Does does Rihanna still do her skinty her skinty mm -hmm. her Fenty skincare line? That as well? actually would have been a cool name, but anyway. I know. Hire me. Girl. Yeah, seriously, I think <laughs> that could have worked. It could have. It could have. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. she does. Like Simone uses some of her products and she raves about them. Really? Yeah. Because I know a lot of people were saying like it had like fragrances in the, and that's like an issue for a lot of people, like fragrances with yeah. skincare and things like that. I think she said like her moisturizer is really good is one of the products that she does use. Okay. I'm into Urban Skin RX. Mm-hmm. Um, or oh, what? Not Urban Skin RX. Or this, what? Uh, yeah, no, I think it is. I think it's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. Huge fan of it. Love mm-hmm. it. It's making my skin look a lot better, glowing. Mm-hmm. But I, I just can't wrap my head around. Like, can you let people that are like taking the time to do the research have their own vodka, have their own skincare line, have their own everybody is into something now. And I'm just like, Yeah. Let us have something. Ser- like let the regular degulars have something. This is very, very true. Or if you wanna like, why don't you just like do a sponsorship with a with a skincare line. You yeah. Know? Like, you know. That's all I'm saying. Do like, a couple of ads. You know. Something cute. And I'm not talking about like the Jackie Inez of the world. Because like she literally is self-made. And I'm not mm. saying that some celebrities aren't self-made. Right. But we like watched her come up. But like. You know. Y'all got these Marvel checks. And you know. <laughs> you got enough money yo. NFL husbands and mm. Grammys. And all of a sudden like. Mm-hmm. You don't see Beyonce saying like look at my skin. Yeah. No, like she found her niche with Adidas in Ivy Park. This is true. She did. And here we are. Mm -hmm. Like we're good. So. Yeah. I feel that. That's just how I feel. Like leave something for the rest of us. I feel that. I feel that, sis. I do. I do. I do. You you might be on to something. Yeah. You might be on it. Like leave that to the right. The people who are. Who do the science. Yeah. Leave the science stuff to the science people. I'm going to blame Diddy for this. Because when Diddy came out with Ciroc. All of a sudden. Oh, my God. Everybody and their mom right. was dropping liquor. Jeezy got a tequila. 50 dropped um, effing. Um, you know what I'm saying? So everybody's like, oh, like, I went to Mexico, and I played with agave, and I played with limes, and all of a sudden. I have a tequila. I have a tequila. Like, no. Isn't Casamigos one of them tequilas that's a celebrity? No, so Casamigos is just it just got popular oh. and like got everybody drinking it. I thought it was that Kendall Jenner vodka. Remember when she had that? She was it was it was that her? She does have a vodka. Uh, she does have a tequila, but oh. I don't think. Oh shoot, that's who I that's who, that, that's whose brand I thought it was was hers because I remember they did like a commercial and it was like really offensive because they were like in sombreros and things like that. But here's my thing: like, it, how was it affect? Because if you look at a Patron commercial, it's the same thing. I don't know. I don't. I am not a mm. Mexican. I don't wear sombreros, so I don't know. But yeah, that's just something I kind of remember. I think it was yeah. about, but I'm not sure. I don't know. So yeah. But what about you, sis? What can't you wrap your head around? Okay, so this very interesting question came across my Twitter timeline, uh-huh. and I was like, "Oh, I answered this." But here is the question. The question is: On a scale of one to ten, what's your sus- susceptibility to being drafted into a cult? Oh. This person says, mine is like a 9.5 because I have a lot of siblings, so I'm attracted to large group activities. And also, I grew up Christian, which is basically like cult practice. Damn. Oh, my God. I but I, I was kind of like looking through the answers or whatever. And I think a lot of people are way more delusional than they think they are. Wow. Myself included. Wow. Because on a 1 of 10, I, I put myself at a 1 in terms of being someone who is more susceptible to be into a cult. So I don't think I would be that much susceptible to being in a cult. But I think a lot of people are probably in denial about that. Like, do you think, like, truly and honestly, think about everything that you do, mm-hmm. like, all the choices you make. Would you mm. be, like, one to ten? What's your scale? Like, what's your number, like, of you being susceptible to being in, in a cult? <laughs> I'm going to say, like, a two or a three. Like. Okay. Because after, strong, and more towards a two. Because, mm-hmm. like, after a while, it's like, okay, I don't do this no more. Like, right. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, d- depending on what it is. Like, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And I'm very suspicious Same. of everything. So I'm like, I don't trust people like that. So I'll really be like, why are we doing this again? Right. What, what happened? <laughs> 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 like something would just click. Like it, it sounds good in the beginning. Like, oh yeah, back. And then I'll be like, wait, hold on. Wait, mm-hmm. back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. <laughs> we doing what now? What are we doing? Not you having me carrying lumber. Yeah. Well, I won't be doing where it. Where are we going? I won't be doing you it. You want us all to drink this? I don't think so. For what? I don't think so. Yeah, it's a strong one or two now. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I wonder if that's only because we know so much about cults and, like, how they move and how they how they maneuver. But even when I'm looking, I'm like, how are all these people, like, getting mm. caught up in these kinds of things? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, that part. Like, even in the 80s and 70s before technology was the way it was, like, how 
were y'all getting caught up like this? I think probably back then it was a little bit easier because every like things like that were kind of like new and fresh, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. We can say that conversation for another day. That's a very interesting question. But if you are listening that. or watching, please leave a comment. I need to know. Yeah. How one a scale of one to ten, and then let me shout out this this young lady because you know this is, was not my question. This was mm-hmm. hers. Her name on Twitter is at Jazz Money Records. J A S Money Records. Um, I need to know how susceptible are you one to ten of being in a cult? So, Maybe yeah. we do like a a, a green <clears throat> screen. Put that on the TikTok. Yeah. And answer it and have people answer it. You know what I mean? That's a, we'll do that one tonight. It's me. I know about the green screens, but I don't know how to use it. We gonna teach her. We gonna teach her. I don't. We gonna teach her. I don't know how to do it. Yes, we are. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's get into this show. Get into it. We got uh not t- not too much um politics, but enough. Yeah. You wanna start with the Virginia with the Virginia governor? Sure. Sis brought this story to my attention. I didn't know anything about this. Mm. What is this? Tom Foolery. Yeah. So um mm-hmm. you guys know that Glenn Youngkin is the newest governor of Virginia. And he did say in his campaign that he was going to fight against uh, CRT, critical race theory, against equity and inclusion, things like that. Mm -hmm. He said that in his campaign. Well, he actually stuck to his guns because he's actually removing the word equity from a lot of the educational resources, as well as even from the title of one of his cabinet members. Mm -hmm. It's really ridiculous. Um, (laughs) Like, (laughs) like, seriously? (laughs) Um, So he... Like, literally change official references of diversity, equity, inclusion to diversity, opportunity, and inclusion. Even though his legislator rejected the change, this resulted in a change of the job title of Virginia's top diversity officer, Angela Saylor. Mm -hmm. The terms resource equity and responsibility to advance racial, social, and economic equity, I'm sorry, economic equity are also gone from all education systems. So what's the, the new terms? Everything should be opportunity. We don't need to say equity. And when I say every, like, in, when, when it comes to Virginia. When it comes to Virginia. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, Who is, okay. So the state superintendent um, claimed all the resources on the Ed Equity VA promoted di- uh, divisive concepts. So the Ed Equity VA is, divine, is defined by our com- Commitment to eliminating the predictability of student outcomes based on race, gender, zip code, ability, socioeconomic status, and or languages spoken at home. Who's this helping, though? I don't know. What's this for? It, it makes it makes no sense. Um I mean, there's a couple of his legislators that is like completely against it. He said now because Don L. Scott Jr. said now because of politics, he's made that one word out. He's he's made that one that word one of his words to take out. He's abandoning equity. And I think that's really, really sad. He's gone so far to the right on this issue. And he's a smart guy. So he knows that he's what he's doing because he knows all the equity in the corporate world. And that's I mean. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like this is such a strange thing to, to be like, take yeah. precedence over more pressing issues mm-hmm. instead of language. I mean, granted, language is important in terms of, because even you were, when we were talking about diversity inclusion, we were like, well, what is that anyway? Right. You know, so I understand it, but I also don't understand like, why you pressing this of all the things that could be you know, Virginia, yeah. Virginia? Yeah. There's a lot that you would be doing <laughs> besides like removing that word from everything. Yeah. Like, like like you can't even say the word to the point that you have to like take that t- diversity opportunity and equity leader like what does that even mean I don't know but equity is the is the uh the ideal term in terms of getting like other people on the same level as white people I'm going to read the the actual definition of equity Okay the quality of being fair and impartial mm. the value okay no that's like when it comes to a company, the value of the shares issued mm-hmm. by a company. But like, so the quality of being fair and impartial. So then if you're looking at uh, diversity and diversity, equity and inclusion, that mm-hmm. goes diversity, opportunity, the quality of being fair and impartial. Mm-hmm. Opportunity doesn't match mm-hmm. that at all. <laughs> at all. I'm confused. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. What was the reason? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really make any sense, but none I mean, whatsoever. To your point, it's like 
I mean, you could be doing so many other things. I'm not like super sure of like everything that's going on in Virginia, but I know shit is not, you know, gumdrops and rainbows out there. So Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? There are more pressing matters happening in Virginia. I'm almost certain <laughs> of it. So these politicians and their agenda of just kind of like erasing like CRT equity. I mean, it, you might as well just just come out and say that y'all want Jim Crow back. Just come out and say it. Just say that. I swear it would be so much easier. So we could just be like, how about no and move on. But all this <laughs> stuff is just, I'm just saying. Like, Seriously. Just say you just say you want Jim Crow. You want segregation back. Right. Just say that. Say it. So we can tell you no, but right, and be like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Next, speaking of governors and their bullshit, you've all seen this. Governor DeSantis talking to talks crazy to some students. We're gonna play this clip. Here it is. You do not have to wear those masks. I mean, please take them off. <laughs> Honestly, it's not doing anything, and we got to stop with this COVID theater. So if you want to wear it, fine, but this is a, this is ridiculous. All right. Well, it's good to be at USF. I hate this guy. He didn't greet them. He didn't shake their hand. He didn't say anything. Shout out to my man all the way first to the left. He was like, oh. Anyway, in other news, yeah. I'm keeping my mask yeah. on. I got to go home to family. Right. And, yeah. Like, who you... Who you think you talking to? Who you think you talking to? (laughs) Like, cause even now, like my job and in the whole state, the mask mandate has been lifted, and I'm still walking up in the mugs with the mask on. Okay, for me in my house. Okay, I'm not trying to hear that. And he's talking about it's a what did he say? Hold on, let's play it one more time. Yeah. COVID, COVID COVID theater. theater. COVID theater. <laughs> to vaccinate or not to vaccinate. That is the question. <laughs> what? Listen, y'all want to Andrew Gillum out of there for some reason so you can get this nut bag in there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't it, make any sense to me. It was uncomfortable. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, if you, like, I, I'm, I'm thinking that these are high school students that are, or, you know, I'm thinking because you showed me the video of one of their moms. moms. Yeah. So if it was a college student, so like, not your mom driving Ooh. up here. But <laughs> I'm thinking these are high school students that are like. They look like high school students? Yeah, maybe they were there for a tour or, or something, something. But I don't know because they were at the UCF, the college, the, the, the college UCF. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not particularly sure. Nonetheless, I, still bizarre. Yeah, it was just like, can you imagine? Like, I know if like I was getting ready to meet the governor, like that's exciting mm-hmm. for somebody like that. So for you to just be like, you know, not, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, welcome. You're like, take those, take those masks off. This is ridiculous. Like, that's how you address me. The, Ew. My first, ch- my first opportunity to meet you. That's how you talk to me. Honestly, it's a learn. It's it's a learning opportunity because by the next time it's time to vote, they'll be 18 and they'll know what to do. So that's how I look at it. Like I, I hope so. Okay, register to vote. That's not what you, you're not preaching about. That you're preaching about masks. You should be preaching them about registering to vote. Register at eighteen to vote. You know, and wear your mask so you can be here to mm-hmm. vote. Yeah, act like it's a sorority and do your research. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know all the details about this next story, but I felt like it was kind of important because mm. it's kind of scary. Brittany Griner is currently in custody in Russia. Child. She got caught with some weed on her. Girl. And I'm trying to figure out how she get weed in Russia. I'm trying to figure out why she was over there. I think, don't they be playing the, the women's basketball, right? The WNBA? Why? No, the WNBA. Yeah. Nah. The what? WNBA play, Well, not the W. Oh, shit. Well, no, like WNBA players, they play like in their offseason, they go and play for other countries. Oh yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. So she might have a like a a contract with whatever team she plays for in the USA, and then she also might have another contract for a team in Russia or a team in Germany or something like that. 
Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. You're abs. Okay. So yeah. So this mm-hmm. is what happened. So like, yeah. She spends her off season playing for the Russian team U M M C something in Russian. Okay. Um. Act. Act. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. Um. Really, really weird. So like the Russian Federal Customs Service. Customs Service says an American at the airport was carrying hash oil. Russia's Interfax News Agency quoted a statement from the Customs Service, which did not identify the travel by name. As a U.S. citizen was passing through the Green Channel at the airport upon arriving from New York, a, a working dog from uh, from the Customs Canine Department detected the possible presence of narcotic substances in the accompanying luggage. The customs inspection of the hand luggage being carried by the U.S. citizen confirmed the presence of vapes, was specifically smelling liquid, and an expert determined that the liquid was cannabis oil or hash oil, which is a narcotic substance. So... Brittany. Yeah. This is the second week that she's over there. Um... I saw this video where it is, they, like, they have a picture of her holding up a sign or whatever, and they're saying they don't even know where, where exactly in Russia she is right now. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Mm-hmm. It does It does say that her whereabouts since her arrest are also remain unknown. This, this is the worst time to be in Russia yeah, and be in Russian jail. It also noted that Russia has some very, very strict LGBTQ rules and laws. Uh, we all know that Brittany Griner is a, you know, um, is a member of the LGBT community, um, though it's not clear whether those rules and laws might affect uh, or impact Griner's case. Um, but it does look like the Biden administration is working hard. Um, I mean, if Trump can get ASAP Rocky back over here, hopefully Biden can get Brittany Griner back over here. Well, I know we, it's bad timing. Well, we also weren't about to go to war with Russia when that's true too. Trumpito was in office. This is so. very true. And then didn't and didn't um, Joe Biden just announce today that he's cu- cutting off? Yeah. Um. What what uh what what is it? Uh. Something with the oil, some type of oil, something. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, this is not good. Gas already expensive too. That Tesla looking good more and more every day. I'm My so- bike's looking good more and more. I- I'm sorry they calling y'all the N word every day at Tesla, but <laughs> it's looking like I'm getting a bike. And I'm not talking about a Peloton. I'm talking about a swing. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm like, listen, job. Y'all need to send me a stipend for gas if y'all want me to come to the office. And that's and and let's talk about. Yeah, that. let's talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Because the way gas is looking like, honey, okay, an over overachiever's GPA. Ooh. Let's move on in the same realm of women's basketball. Yeah. The New York Liberty were was fined re- half a million. For chartered flights, and we know they're not making that much money. So, sis. Yeah. So it's looking like the WNBA has been flying, been flying coach for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, just read this story. Um, so the WNBA actually gave them a five hundred thousand dollar fine against the New York Liberty for their repeated use of charter flights over the back end of the season. Okay, an issue that has been at its boiling point for the past few years. Um, Yeah. So last season, they actually decided to push those boundaries by paying for charter flights anyways. um, After they were caught, a furious league officer uh, proposed massive penalties, including a million dollar fine, substantial loss of draft picks and possibly even termination of the franchise. Wait, 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 wait. Termination of the New York Liberty. Right. Like. That's crazy. Bye bye, Teresa Witherspoon's, you know, legacy. And the CEO of the WNBA is like, this is their doing? Like, is that? Um, so basically, like, this, the WNBA doesn't want their owners to charter flights for their respective teams. Um, well, why? Yeah. Uh, why? Yeah. So it looks like, like they announced a $75 million capital raise from investors to help address some of these problems. Um, yeah. It's just. It's I don't not. understand why the threat of terminating the whole organization would yeah, be on because the table. They're, because, they're they're taking, using, because they're taking chartered flights. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's because they have some like. I, I'm my. This is my only like guess or opinion. Like, if they're working with like VCs, you know, maybe it's kind of like cutting through deals. What's VC? Like venture capital. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like maybe they're working with different. You know, I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe it's like, oh, we're trying to work with different VCs to like raise some capital so that y'all can have 
charter flights and y'all paying for stuff under the table. Well, not under the table, but like yeah. maybe it's cutting in deals. I don't know. Oh. Damn. Sorry. That's interesting. Yeah. That's the only thing. Um, It does say that like this came from like. So once the WNBA announced that uh, $75 million capital raise from investors, um, they did say it's really important that the players know that this is investment in them, even though it's in the league and not a specific team or just specific players. Um, it's to help grow our venture teams and produce sustainable long-term growth. Mm -hmm. um, it does say the Liberty is one of the WNBA's eight founding franchises. So um, they're one of three, the Sparks and the Mercury still, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, know. Oh, man. Yeah. Not the organization finding the team. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's, that's the founding team. Like, that's like, that's like the NBA getting rid of the Knicks. As bad as we may be sometimes. Like, it's just not realistic. That's crazy. It's, we're the mecca of basketball. Like, you, you can't do that. That's just, as bad as we are, <laughs> we're the mecca of basketball. Mm, Period. Mm-hmm. So. That is the mecca of basketball. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we just are. <laughs> With those numbers, all right. Here we go. TikTok <laughs> tech propaganda. <laughs> I showed my sister's video today. And Shooketh. <laughs> Very, okay. This is going to be like a cautionary tale for y'all about like kind of just like putting your. Just watch the video. <laughs> just watch the video. Question is what do I do for a living? I work in digital marketing. Side note, these are the earrings that I got, and yeah, I still love them. Um, I work in digital marketing, so there are a lot of uh, facets within digital marketing. My expertise is in paid social, so I run a lot of Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok ads, whatever. Um, I've been in it for about seven years, and it's really great, and I love it. I work for a wonderful company, and yeah, um, and it segues into something else. I got a lot of um, messages and DMs about, you know, if I can help mentor people and how I got into the field and all of that. And yes, I am more than happy to help. Just send me a message on LinkedIn or my Instagram. A couple of you have done that. But what not to do that someone did was take it upon themselves to email my CEO with my full government name about a TikTok they saw mm. to potentially ask for a job. Don't do that. That's not cool immediately irritating um you know let's just keep the conversations between us luckily enough my ceo was super cool he thought it was funny but don't don't do that that is very weird yeah the second most asked question was how much was the bonus and i would have happily answered this to you but now that my coworkers and my ceo and everybody i work with now knows about this tiktok most likely i don't feel comfortable answering it but i know people are um, curious about it and so i will say um the down payment for the tesla was 8k you saw the other things that i bought i put about 16 percent in my 401k 5% in my Roth, another 5% in my um, brokerage investment accounts, and then um, another 5% in my savings. So that minus the taxes that you take for federal and then the all the other numbers that I said, that was what my bonus was. Um, it was a very lucrative bonus. I'm very blessed about it. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions about digital marketing, like I said, reach out. Happy to help. I love to see people thriving in their careers, especially women and especially black women. It's very, very difficult to move up in these fields where there are no people who look. Yeah, that was the end of that. So. So for those of you who are who don't get on TikTok mm. often right now, there seems to be like some type of like propaganda in terms of getting more black people in tech which mm. awesome we want to see it we love to see it absolutely we think it's great um with that being said there are people who are in tech who are opening themselves up mm. to you know for questions and things like this and she's just one of the many like many yeah, people it's a lot of them. yeah it's i mean a lot of them but i really thought it was interesting the reason why i wanted to show sis the video and show it to y'all is because someone took the time to find her government name look up her job and ask for a job through her CEO. One, that's scary as hell. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
That's scary as hell. Very scary. You know what I'm saying? Very scary. Very scary. And she probably might be a recruiter or something like that, which mm-hmm. maybe that's how they found her and found like, you know, her job or whatever. But yeah. that is so scary. <sighs> and two, I'm to assume that she was going to be sharing how much money she made. But because of that situation, she's no longer sharing it, which to me is also another issue within itself. Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out why you would feel so comfortable on this mega platform, which has literally become a digital encyclopedia of information, mm-hmm. honestly. Why you would feel comfortable with sharing that amount of to me is that's just a door to like people rob you. Yes. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's I feel like it's it's a catch twenty two. Cause on one end you should be able to share you know, your successes and, you know, why you're successful and how you became successful. But then the flip side is kind of like, mm, maybe I need to hold back a little bit because, I mean, sharing how much you make is just like people, s- certain, you just don't know who's watching you. A certain people's wheels are going to turn. So if you're talking about somebody was able to just figure out who you are, where you, you work, work, that also means that they're able to figure out where you live, who your Be- people are. It's not that hard in 2022. I, I hate to say it, but that's honest. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, I kind of feel for this girl because it's like, damn, I want to help y'all, but y'all just, you know, you, I give you an inch and you take a whole mile. Right. So now it's like, okay, well, you know, I mm. I just think if you're going to be like doing that kind of stuff, you need to be a little bit more cautious. Yeah. And, and I don't know if like, it's easy to find our last names, yeah. <laughs> you know, but y'all gonna know my first and last name because like, I we, we ain't been working hard for nothing You're right you know what I'm saying but nonetheless like even still you, you gotta be careful like right we don't talk about where we work right you know what I'm saying you, you know we work and yeah. you know we live in Charlotte that, and that's it that's that's it that's it Charlotte is big as hell mm-hmm. and there's many companies yes. so yeah but I don't know I just that is just so scary to me and with her being like a black woman and like mm-hmm. that whole opportunity could be taken like it, imagine if her like CEO didn't think it was so funny I was just gonna say that you know what I'm saying she could be out of a job and then, so now how I'm supposed to help you because right. I gotta help myself now right but I, you know what it's it's we were talking we were getting ready to talk about it before we started recording like it's I feel like with TikTok or not even saying TikTok, mm-hmm. just on social media in general, I feel like, how do I say this? Like, I feel like there's, you have to pick and choose when and how you sh- kind of give leeway into your life. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I know that there's, you know, you have lifestyle influencers that are extremely transparent and open about their life. And that's cool. That's cool. So now you, so first is lifestyle. Now it's tech, the couples, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like now you have couples that literally are setting up cameras to let people know they broke up. That is crazy. That's insane. That is crazy to me. So it's just like, I think. They are crying. You, <laughs> I just, yeah, like you set up a camera <laughs> to let your followers know that, that y'all broke up. Like that's, that's wow. Like. And it's not like, you know, like a Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, like getting divorced type situation. You, They didn't do that. Like, I, I just, I think that there needs to be some type of segue or some type of wall that it's like, all right, where's the cutoff? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. And I, I feel bad for this young girl because, like, I know she wants to help people. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I mean... I think with videos like this, now I kind of understand why people are setting up these classes. Everybody got a master class now. Yeah, oh, child. Maybe we should drive one. I mean. Y'all want a master class? We have been through a lot. We probably could have a master class. Yeah, we really could. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, sis. I'm sorry. But (laughs) No, but you're right. But it's like, you know, like, I'm kind of understanding it now because it's like, okay, I'm not going to give y'all all this information for free in these mm-hmm. little, you know, 10 second TikTok videos. You want this information, you going to pay for it and we'll have a separate situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I I think for me, it's just about safety. Mm. And I think about like that all the time. But I was I always thought about safety in terms of like 
how you post on social media and whatnot. Like, mm. I even think about, like, how you take it back to lifestyle blog- bloggers. And people be like, just moved into my new apartment. Let me do a new tour. And I'll be like, oh. let me pull the ski mask down so I can rob your ass. Because why are you showing me your new apartment? You're moving in here. You come Girl. in. You show me your car, your garage. I know what it looks like on the outside of your apartment now. Like, day in my life. With- there was a video of... Like a lady doing, like she was like looking at something in her backyard, and she was zooming in. Someone had stitched it and was like, "I know exactly where this is, girl." That's how um, what's that, <laughs> that rainbow hair guy? What was his name? Um, the that, rapper? Yeah, uh, Takashi Six Nine. T- like that's how somebody, somebody like one of the TikTok girls that he had rented some house out on Long Island somewhere, and some girl was like, "Oh, look who's next door to me." Now this thing is supposed to be hiding out, You're right? She was like, oh, look. Exactly. Look who next door to me. That's just not safe. Like, all of those, like, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like, that's crazy. Like, if you're moving on, if you're in, if you're, if you're moving on the internet in a certain way where people are invested in you in that, in that sense, yeah. you really, really have to be careful. You have to be careful anyway, but when people are invested in you and the information you're offering in that sense, facts. you need to be careful. All like, facts. because it is crazy out here. People, people have gone, people are nuts. You have, like, you hear about some Pop pick- smoke. Right. Pop smoke. Is the a prime example of Perfect this. Perfect example. Perfect example. Somebody, oh, we out here. We out. And even with that, we mm-hmm. outside. Yeah, we yeah. outside. Yeah. Somebody that's looking for you, like, that's what's so funny to me. Like, you know, I can't believe they found me. Can, can you really not can believe? Can you? You really? You really can't Let's take a look it. at your story. Mm. I know exactly where you are. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I, like, I'll see my friends out of the Oh, yeah, I've been there. That's cool. I know where you at. Know where you at. I'm about to pull up. That's crazy. You got to be careful, guys. Please. You know, please be careful because this is no joke, okay? Yeah. And there's some wild people out here. And stop making Instagram pages for your children. Pedophilia is real. There's men out here beating their meat to your children. And I know that is a very harsh thing to think about, but it is real. I'm ready to talk about it when y'all are because I swear one more y'all send me a, a follow my kid. No. No. I'm not doing it. I mean, it's Okay. And then I probably can move on. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm cool with it. It's I- one thing to have an Instagram. Like, there's a young, there's actual, um, I'm getting ready to work on the story, and I'm actually about to, like, mm-hmm. reach out to this little girl. Mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all saw the TikTok video of the little girl saying bye to her grandfather. Yeah. Like, I got, yeah, yeah. She's right here in Charlotte. Mm. But her mother is very present in her videos. You know what I'm saying? She's not doing anything that is, uh, I guess sexual yeah. or intimate mm-hmm. accounts like that is one thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but y'all out here dressing y'all kids in mini Gucci's or you know mini just is it's just it's weird. Your kid, did, I mean, I, when I have kids, my kids gonna be fly as hell too. But there's gonna be a limit. There's gonna be a cap because to your point, uh uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. no, it's weird. I, I'm not gonna have you know some grown ass woman. So you know like. It's always, and I know it's something that people say all the time, but like, it's kind of like, it's hard when you're like, oh, he's going to be a little heartbreaker when he right. grow up. Like, right. we got to stop saying stuff like that. Cause like, yeah, he's, he's a cute little kid, yeah, but yeah. it's weird. He may grow up to be a little asshole. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying like. No, for real. And the same with little girls. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, she's so cute. Look at her little curves. Mm-hmm. Like, like. What are you talking about? She's six. Yeah. John Prison. Day Ramsey. Prison. John Benet Ramsey. See? Just Child. saying. All righty, we're gonna move on. Sis also brought this one up to me as well. Gotta love Florida. They that's where we get most of our news from. And Stephanie, get out of there. Um <laughs> <laughs> we'll always say it until she gets up out of there. So, I mean, I guess it's I mean it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. So because you don't hear about stuff like this every day, right? So there was a police chief in uh Fort Lauderdale. Um, who was actually fired for prioritizing minority candidates during the hiring process. Um, He's actually been accused of overlooking white candidates, but he claimed his intentions were to create a department that was a reflection of the diverse community he serves. And with that, he has no regrets. Um, According to, this is a CNN report, it said the city hired a law firm to investigate his practices. They found, um, his name is uh, Larry Scarotto. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, they found that he had hired 15 people between August and November with six being of ethnic or gender minorities who were selected for promotions. Uh, Scarota was also reported to have said the wall of photos of department staff was too white and had plans to change that. Um, 
I don't see the problem. Yeah, it said none of them were promoted because they were in a protective class. They were promoted because they were the best candidates. Um, he actually has obtained like legal counsel. As and he, he should. He said, if promoting diversity is the hill I'm going to die on, then I will sleep well tonight, period. He said, I won't allow them to tarnish my reputation. I won't allow them to tarnish the work that I've done in 24 years I've been in the in this um, in this profession. Period. Shout out to Chief Scar- uh, okay. Scaroto. That's him right there? That is him right there, okay. Fort Lauderdale. I love it. I love it. I mean... We need more Florida men like that. Yeah, I mean, and, and like, I love, like, the point... For me, it's like 15 people, so six out of the 15, that's still, you know, let's do the math here. Right. Mm-hmm. That's still... Nine. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, Wait, it was 15? 15. Yeah, that's nine. Mm-hmm. I'm Wait. with you. I got you, sis. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> it's nine. I'll be having to do the same thing. If it's wrong, tell us in the comments. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, you can't handle six people of ethnic and gender minorities for, just because they got a promotion. It's making them sick, girl. They can't stand it. Just do your work better. They said there's too many colors in, in high positions. Right. <laughs> too many color people in the high positions. I don't like it. Uh-uh. Something, something, something uh, sus is going on. Yeah, I don't that, like it. That is crazy. So shout out to him. I do hope that he's able to get another job or leave and get, get his job back. Mm-hmm. And I hope he continues to do the work that he does because yeah. that ain't that's just not cool. That is crazy. Jerk. Jerk. Okay. This one is for Alana. Alana, hey girl. Hey girl. She uh hopped up in our DMs on Instagram. <laughs> and you know what? I feel like we should make this a segment. Okay. If you got a grievance, not with us, okay. Oh, I'm down to make this a segment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you have a grie- a grievance, leave us a voice mes- message in our DMs. I'm opening it up right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're gonna have we're gonna hear uh Alana's grievance, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I understand for some reason, like, TV thinks it's a good idea to remake the classics. You know, we got Bel Air. There was talk about remaking Girlfriends. What I do not want to happen is this so-called Urkel reboot because it looks stupid. Why? Why? You know what? Y'all just go watch it for yourselves. YouTube Urkel reboot and... This needs to be discussed this week, Monday, Tuesday. I thought I thought y'all filmed on Tuesday, but maybe not. I need thoughts, please, because this is this is ridiculous. Like, leave ninety sitcoms alone. I mean, <laughs> thank you, Alana, for your grievance. Uh, I'm not. I didn't even waste my time looking it up because I don't want to see it. Okay, if it ain't what's his name, Jaleel White. Okay, and the rest of them, yeah. There's no point in me tuning in. There's no point in me tuning in. She said a trigger with girlfriends. Now if they even think about touching girlfriends. I'm on my way to Hollywood. Only if everybody come back and they fix that last season because I could. Ooh. That last season was so bad. I, did, I think I watched the first episode and I was like, I won't be doing it. I watched it up until like they broke mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like the the way the whole series ended was like garbage. So we just don't know what happens to Aaron. Yeah, it's garbage. It's garbage. But, I mean, it just, I, I'm with Alana 100%. I said it last weekend when we were um, singing like the uh, In Living Color theme song. We have Saturday Night Live and that's bad enough, okay? Damn. Like, damn. we don't need any reboots. Unless it's done, no, 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 no. I don't know. I just feel like reboots, like y'all need to like, I know it was like your favorite show or whatever, like, and just go back and watch that. That's all. And let's just come up with some new stuff. That's the thing. So it's like, honestly, all these reboots and remakes and everything like that is just like, it's just showing the lack of uh, authenticity Mm -hmm. and creativity in Hollywood. I mean, everybody can't be a Quinta Brunson. Everybody can't be a, shoot, a Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. Like, I know y'all don't like Tyler Perry sometimes, but hey. (laughs) Even though it's Medea, it's Mm -hmm. Medea in a different situation every time. Yeah. So, I mean. I agree with her. I agree with her 100%. Yeah. The show is just going to be called Urkel? I don't know because I ain't look it up and I'm not doing that to myself. I'm not doing it to myself. I won't be doing that to myself. Since we talk about reboot, should we talk about? Well, that yeah. Well, since we're, yeah, we don't gotta talk about that. This, yeah, yeah, we can take that off. Okay. All right. Well, since we're here, yeah, let's talk about Bel Air. Um, I like the show. I enjoy it a lot. I mm-hmm. think it's pretty good. I like, I like the whole flip of. I, I like yeah. that it's a drama. 
Yeah. I think it goes actually pretty well with a drama. Um, Carlton, get help um, immediately. Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah, my bad. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Yeah. You know what to do. Time uh, time stamps will be in the description box. Yeah. Um, damn. Mm, mm-hmm. I like this show, though. I like it a lot. Uh, Uncle Phil is fine. Oh. I said Uncle Phil is fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. He's okay. <gasps> okay. But we can talk about Jeffrey, though. He is fine. Okay, now. <laughs> hey, bruv. Yeah. All right. He could be my house manager you know, anytime. You hear me? I think I just like dark-skinned men with British accents. That's my, That might be a thing I for think me. that is your love language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a bad one to have. I, I don't, mean, I don't hate it. Because I don't Jeffrey, I like, like, he said, I'll handle it. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> that's my love language handle it boo handle it what do you think about the show are you enjoying it do you like it i am enjoying it um a whole lot i was telling sis i'm still not sold on will all the way i don't know why not i think he does a great job he does a great job i just i don't know i guess i don't know i mean think about it Let's think about who we're talking about. Will Smith, when he probably came out, was probably like this really corny, light-skinned dude. Very true. He did say that. He said him watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was like so cringeworthy to him because like the acting was so bad. Yeah. He did say that. So I think I think the young man who plays him is, I think he's doing a great job. I think he's doing a great job. I think he is doing, like I'm at like a 70. I'm not, and mm-hmm. I, I was telling this before, I think it's it's been kind of hard for me because I'm, I Fresh Prince and Martin, favorite shows of all time mm-hmm. so it's kind of hard for me to like take the comedic element out of it yeah. and like now see this whole new fresh and innovative take on it mm-hmm. um i love the way that they have reframed hillary yeah love it so mm-hmm. much mm-hmm. i still watch reruns of fresh prince of bel-air mm-hmm. all the time so to see hillary be this complete airhead and you know on the original show to see coco jones out here making a name for herself and being so unapologetically black and fabulous. Mm-hmm. Like love it. And I love that they gave Ashley like shit. They've made her like a, um, I guess she's a lesbian. Yeah. It's an interesting take on that character for sure. I'm glad that they, cause I was starting to like be like, okay, where's mm-hmm. Ashley in all this? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I also like how they're kind of playing in on Aunt Viv as well as mm-hmm. to like, we do that she was a, a, a professor. Yeah. In the in the sitcom, she was an English professor. Mm-hmm. Now she's an art professor. And I love the way they're like, okay, like, yeah, uh, Phil can have his career, but right. you're doing what? Like, let's, let's, let you have talent. Like, open it up. So the only thing I don't know in this, sh- Will is, who's his real um, aunt or uncle? It's it's Vivian. For, mm-hmm. for, aunt Viv is, aunt Viv, Viv is his aunt. For, for real, in, Bel- in the Bel Air show. Yes. Okay. Yes. On Fresh Prince, it's Uncle Phil's is actually. Mm-mm. Oh, it's oh. Aunt Viv. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uncle Phil's always just been, you know, it, through like, marriage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So they okay. still kept that element in there. Mm-hmm. But um Carlton. Wow. His that's enough because Carlton was my favorite character mm-hmm. on Fresh Prince. So it was kind of hard to see oh. this version of Carlton. I'm like, why is Carlton the villain? I like it. I do too, but it, it took me a minute. I was mm-hmm. like, oh my God, Carlson is. But then when you watch the sitcom, it's like, I yeah. could kind of see that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yes. It's, it's kind of like, all right, yeah. maybe, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I I love it all. I think it's good. I think you guys, if you haven't watched it, I think you should definitely give it a try. What do you think about Lisa. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Sure. I do like the whole, the lad, the episode. Are you all caught up? I am. The episode um, where they're doing the memorial for her mother and Aunt Viv. Ooh, chow. And the, the new, the new white stepmom. Yo. Mm-hmm. Ah, I was like, ah. The way sis told herself, Vivian said, hold on, oh, wait a minute. That was in what year? Oh. Okay. Math, mm-hmm. 2019, 20- yeah, hmm. no, she was still alive. You know what I really thought was going to happen? What? I thought sis was going to like give birth. Like I thought her words going to break to oh, make it about her again. Yeah. I was like, I was so stressed Oof. the whole time. I was like, <gasps> the real plot twist is her daddy being garbage. I don't know why I was shocked by that, but I'm very, very shocked. Were you, okay, were you mad at um Trey's reaction? 
Trey. When his friend came out there and he was. Oh, uh, yes. Was like, okay, so you were mad too? Yeah. I was like, are we really doing this? Like. Talking about. What you mean? Like, this ain't us. Like, it is me now. What you talking right? about? Right. Like, you, I'm going to go back to Philly and leave all this? Listen, I wouldn't even go no back. No shade to Philly, but. I wouldn't even go back to Philly. Not only live in Charlotte. <laughs> so. That's real shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like. Like, look, at, look where I'm at. Look, I got, there's a pool in my backyard. I'm driving a Lexus to school. For, to school, my G. Look at my room. I used to take the bus. Right. There's a whole living room set in my, my room. room. I have a couch in my room. Why am I? Why? What why am I going I, back to Philly? Nothing. And the mom, like, my, the mom feeling some type of way, too, about, like, I was like, girl, I need you to calm down. But that's how Aunt Viv was at. In, I mean, not Aunt Viv. That's mm-hmm. how his mom was acting um, on the episode when he was getting ready to graduate college. He was like, yeah. she was like, oh, you can come on to me. And Will was like, oh, mm-hmm. no, I'm going to stay out here. Right. Cool out here. We, we good. Yeah. Mm. I think it's a good show, you guys. I think you should definitely watch it. Yeah. yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan. Definitely a fan. Definitely. All right, y'all. Listen, we have three separate videos to show y'all of men with mics acting an absolute ass should we just do it back to back to back sure okay let's just start with the, the this one uh here we go i got a good job i make very very good money and she says the only thing i need now is a man <laughs> It's like yo, like, <laughs> it's like who wants you? Who wants you? You, you right. right? Like once you have achieved these things, you have unfortunately disqualified yourself. Ooh, and, and, shit! And what it is is these because I and this is the thing. I'm not blaming Ooh, the, the women. women are gonna hate him for that I shit. Thing. No, <laughs> no, see, they are gonna hate too. him for that. They, they I can't wait to put this shit. <laughs> okay, let's start with that one. I I don't know. I just think it's weird that they're la- they don't they think it's funny that they don't want women who make their own money. Like that's strange to me. And it's also like I don't know. It's like the whole like high value man, high value woman and like that whole thing and like if you're looking for your high value woman, she probably is probably like really good at her career and makes a lot of money and is an educated woman. I said this before and I'll say it again. <laughs> Men want a bad bitch and so they actually get one. You. Well, they don't sound like they want bad bitches. They sound like they want women who I don't know. Do nothing? Yeah. I, I don't understand. Honestly, the word that got me here was you're disqualified disqualified because you're disqualified to word, but disqualified got me kind of hot i was like mm-hmm. what do you mean disqu-? like who are you to tell me because i'm that chick i'm doing this i'm doing that i got a career i got side hustles all my bills is paid on time you know give her you know give or take a day or two you know mm-hmm. and then because of that because i'm coming with all this stuff and you're saying, like, and I'm literally saying, all I need is a man. Like, so are you going to be that man? You're like, oh. You make too much money. You're actually a little too much for me because you have your shit together. So you're weak. Basically. Insert that Kobe meme where he's like, soft. <laughs> Insert <laughs> Flo Millie shit. These niggas weak. <laughs> and it's disgusting. I mean, she was on point with that song. Because I don't think these men really feel like that, though. Let me tell you why. What's Be- the name of that show? Go because ahead. that, like, the guy, like, and the guy's like, oh, I can't wait to put this on the air. I can't wait for women to see yeah. that. Like, I don't really think y'all think like that. I, I think y'all are literally just doing this for, like, shits and giggles and to get, like, um, what's it called? Like, rage rage contents or whatever. Like, rage clicks or anger clicks or whatever. I disagree. You think they think like that for real? No, real? I really do. I honestly think, and it probably was a question that was, um, you know, sent, you know, or they were talking about something and like, that's, that's, that just came out. Like, I don't think there was a script or anything. I really do think that that's, that's how they feel or that's how this individual feels. I'm not going to speak for the other two men. Cause you know, that they was like, Oh, speak for yourself, bro. Ain't nobody say, 
Ain't nobody say that. Like, why would why would you want to disqualify a woman who? And it's so funny because men are constantly like, oh, you know, what do you bring to the table? Money. That's too much. You, you can't. That's too much. You can't. You can't bring money to the table now. Apparently. So if I say money, if I say money, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Like, what? What? So if I make more money than you now, you feel emasculated. Oh, child. Because I'm, I mean, because uh, I'm constantly seeing that, like, what do you bring to the table? Like, I'm bringing the table. Can you at least bring a chair? <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I really hate that phrase, what do you bring to the table? I hate it so much. That's a really bad, like, first date question or just, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you bring to the table? The check, because I'm am- fucking out of here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, no, I am the table, like. Maybe I'll let you pull up a chair. Maybe. <sighs> Sis, I don't know. I don't know, but it's just weird. Like this whole, like that's just so weird to me. It is. It's 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 weird. Like all like that's what like all these clips, I'm like, bruh. Well, it's not gonna get any better. Let's run through this next one. Um we'll save the worst for last. Okay. Girls. Girls what? What's up with them? You got any girlfriends? Um, I'm I'm a single individual right now. You know what? I'm a single individual right now. Did you have any girls in school? Uh, I, I I'm kind of um no 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 I'm kind of I'm kind of uh I'm kind of 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 you know I'm kind of don't speak about who. About Wait, my, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> so let me let me guess. You don't identify with a sex needle, right? Did I say that? I'm asking you. You don't want to say you, 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 you uh, keep it real. Let's talk about it. Did I say that though? You did not, but I'm asking you. You know, it, it's it's there's so many different titles, especially today. Um, and where I find myself is desiring someone who who wants me and is willing to accept me for who I am. Yeah. Mm. So um, and that's and that's it's, and I it's, it's, that it's, it's but it's a it's a daily challenge, you know. It but really they, they, they left it too much, and I don't want to put a label on you. you know what I'm saying, but you just said anybody who liked you. So that means if a man like you, you go, you may go that direction. If a man like you, and you feeling them, I think that if any any situation, especially today, it's gonna be, it's it's gonna be a very challenging process. Bro, but well, are you ashamed to say that you like men if you do? Like because because if you do, no disrespect, no disrespect to you, but if you do, like, aren't you supposed to like not be ashamed of it and, and be proud of who you are or in this industry? It's more acceptable. I'm industry. very I'm very proud of who I am. Bro, stop, were you born with it? Bro, like, come on. I, I need the, I, I need the answer. What I'm saying I'm is that. I'm telling you the answer. I'm, t- I'm trying to. I'm trying, <laughs> were you I'm trying born to, I'm gay, bro? Come on, stop. I said, see, I didn't want to yell. Come see, 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 see. See what I'm saying? I didn't want to do that because you forced me. Okay. So, you forced me instead of you. You playing ring around the rose, and I'm trying. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm trying. I'm trying to answer your way. I'm trying to answer. But you your... try to do it politically. We, we, no, we no, have, no. These I'm, conversations I'm trying to, I'm are necessary. Answer your question, Zeke. I'm trying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been with a woman in your life? So okay, much... I'm, I'm not going to talk about my sex life. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's you cross the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Respect. All right, yeah, mm-hmm. G. Child, what the hell was that? Okay. So that was Daniel Bellamy, um, and he is an actor that plays the character of Zeke on uh, Power Book 2, uh, basically Tyreek's story. Um, okay. And this is why the segment is called Men With Mics, because... What? Like, why? Okay. With this situation, honestly, like, here, here's how... Okay, we're prof- we're we're professional podcasters. Okay, you damn right. <laughs> we're professional podcasters. Okay, um, the first thing that you need to do if you're gonna have a celebrity on your show, first of all, you need to do your research. Like, do you know if this guy's even comfortable? You know, and when I'm saying this guy, I'm talking about Daniel. <clears throat> do you know if he's comfortable talking about these type of questions? Like, have you seen him address any of these questions in the past? Have you talked to his publicist or manager about what needs uh, what? Um, you know what they can and can't, can't talk, talk about, about. like mm-hmm. and then on the flip side to the to the actual guest on Daniels was like did you get a script did you get some you know pre uh pre-reviewed questions things like that i'm just i'm just trying to figure out 
why these two men when well, i might say two because the, the man with the with the uh laptop wasn't saying anything Mm-mm. but the initial host was like why would you feel comfortable enough to ask this man these questions that have nothing to do with power have nothing to do with anything i mean and he was really press press like, pressing that yeah. issue like, like he needed to know right very badly if he was gay or not and I need, to, I need to just, to just say, say that. that. Listen. Because he's not a bad looking man. He's not. If you're interested, just say that. Because I'm like. But it's also none of your business. And, you know, he, towards the end of that clip, he's like, so are you gay? Were you born gay or not? Like, really? Were you born gay? Like, yo, the question. Were you born gay? What are you talking about? And even if he was, really, it's not your business. Oh, my gosh. Like, but he, like, that clip was, like, two minutes long, and he pressed him t- for two minutes. Two minutes And that long. was an edited clip. He said, did you, like, and it's the way, like, oh, like, oh, yeah, girls. Let's talk about girls. This is a grown-ass man. What do you mean talk about mm-hmm. girls? And I like how Daniel was like, what about him? Like, right. Just, you know, are you dating? Like, the question could have been, like, are you dating anybody? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just thought it was really weird for him pressing that guy like that. The whole clip was really awkward. Yeah. Like, but again, you got these, you know, upper 30, 40 year old men on here. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to just get, you know, whatever celebrity on the show that we can to press him about whatever. It does give me fresh and fit vibes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, honestly, because it's like, I'm thinking about certain episodes that they had, like, when they had, um, Asian, what's her name? Asian doll. Yeah, they had her on the show. Mm-hmm. Brittany Griner, you know what I'm saying? But Brittany Griner was one of like, okay, like let's we gonna set this record straight for you yeah. even try to get me involved in any of y'all nonsense. Right. Like, that's weird. That was hella weird, and it was very strange that he was pressing him like that. Like, I really think that a lot of these, um, you know, when it comes to podcasting and when it comes to celebrities, I mean, I'm kind of gonna blame the celebrity when it comes to stuff like this happening, because I feel like y'all, you need to do your research as well, especially if you're an up and coming celebrity, you know what I mean? Like you need to vet, do your research on like who is trying to interview you. You know what I'm saying? It could be a small time, even a small time. Cause somebody, when I saw the clip, one of my Twitter followers was like, why the dude even go on the show? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's just you should do your vetting like okay like who am i about to talk to let me see it don't have to be like how many followers you have or how many you know subscribers you have but let me see the content like why am i even going to the show is this show um about power have they talked about the show have mm-hmm. they talked about my career any type of way for them to want me on the show so for you to just be rate me about my sexuality right right it's just really weird like yeah like that's i mean we, Hella we weird we've had different you know like celebrities or like socialites on the show and it's like you know when we had Trayvon Martin's mom on the show Miss Sabrina Fulton like you think we'd invite her on the show if we weren't talking about social injustice matters that I mean why 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 would we have Chico Bean and and Darren Brand on the show if we didn't talk about HBCU culture or we didn't talk about comedy or you know even knew anything about their careers mm-hmm. like that's why like if I were to go on the show and be like you know if Let's say Chico Bean wasn't on Wild and Out anymore, and I'm over. You know, we're over here, like, oh, you know, like, so, you know, what was, it, you know, working on Wild and Out? How was that? Like, he, I'm not on there no more. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. Like, mm-mm. get some decorum. This last one, you all know who he is. And this is, to me, this is the most contradictory clip out of all of them. Okay, here we go. White women go to college to find a man. Black women go to college to prove they don't need one. Your mothers, our mothers failed you because your mothers are actively your competition. This is why you see women who are in their 20s partying with their daughters in their 30s and 40s. I'm sorry, on Instagram, you can have this this woman and this woman. You got mother daughter. Do competing? competing because if your mama ain't married, she's still dating. And if you are 25 and your mother is 41, y'all are likely looking at the same kind of men. Why do we have so many women over 40 still talking about, I'm 40 and I look good, 50 and fly. Your ass should be sitting the fuck down somewhere. You should be somebody's grandma baking cookies. But instead, you got the short haircut out here talking about <laughs> you a diva. Haircut. You can look around and it's like, oh, I'm good, I'm a diva and I'm this oh and that. So why? And then they're competing because like I'm 52 and I have women get angry because I don't date women my age. Pause. Stop right there. Hold on. Didn't this man just say... Didn't this man just say that women who are 40 and 50 should be sitting down mm-hmm, mm-hmm. baking cookies and mm-hmm. shit? But this 52-year-old single man right. with no wife at all is out here telling women what to do. Okay, let's continue. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't, 
Oh. What age group do you do? Uh, under 35. Stop again. Get me the fuck out of here. 52-year-old man. And you're dating under 35. Under 35. But listen to what he says next. That Listen to what he say next. Okay, here we go. Because number one, I don't deal with the, the lack of fitness. What if they're in shape and they're 36? Halle Berry is, looks great. Okay, you yeah. ask what in general. I've dated older than that, but in general. In general. But here's the thing. Why is the next lowest group of married women, white women, at 54%? Because every other race knows that in order to have gener how many black women say we want generational wealth? You don't even have generations. The black family is now the black woman and kids. You work Stop. Now whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? Your fault, because uh, you could be with your wife or somebody raising kids, but you're too busy trying to groom the next uh, 34, 32, 31, shit, 20 year old to be your next wife. And then you're going to dump her when she gets 36. You know what I'm saying? Because she's out of shit. What? Let's continue. We're taught to partner. So the reality is, a lot of women, like in your position, I think, honestly, when you in places that you don't like to talk about because it feels like it makes you look weak. You really want relationship, you're just scared of because you don't know how to do it. Because you weren't taught. You weren't taught how to cooperate. The word submission is a dirty word. The word agreeable and average is a dirty word. We got boss what? bitches and, and bad bitches and divas. And you can't be a bad bitch in, in HR, in customer service. <laughs> Then you got 45 and 50 year old women marrying 27 year old dudes and these women got You are dating the same fucking women that are the same age. You you're, are 52. You're 52 trying to, and then go talk, you know, uh, I date 35 and younger. Like what? Get the fuck out of here. Let's finish this. And what are they doing? Settling just like the high value men did. There is no reason a black woman cannot be smart, educated, and a wife. And who said that we're not? What the fuck is he talking about? All of all all of our <laughs> listeners, all of if you are a black woman, educated, and a wife, drop something below. Drop put a, put a, put a, put the ring emoji down there because they exist. And I am sick. I dis okay. All right. Let me let me cool off for a second. It's not so many people that I just like don't like yes i know i've talked about like not liking paula Patton and her shoulders things like that but this man right here <laughs> i despise him at a cellular level like sis said this is the most controversial thing i'm mean, sorry contradictive thing i've almost ever seen in my entire life so a, a woman who is 47 and is out here thriving can't date a 30 year old or a 28 year old who's also thriving, but you going to sit your single ass down there on the couch with this woman who we know who, is significantly younger than you. Okay. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. You going to sit your old single three time divorce ass on that couch Ooh. and going to say you date women 35 and younger and then your reasoning because i like what this was like well why what's what, why that number because i can't deal with the with the with the lack of fitness are you sitting there looking like tyson beckford hell you're not even sitting there looking like steve harvey shit okay the balls of this man and honestly, I need to know who sis is and why she was even there. Because you're not going to sit here and tell me that my I don't have training. Me and my mother are in competition. Are you fucking dumb? Are you dumb? You're telling me that a 45-year-old woman should be at home while your ass is out there, there's a reason why she's not at home because her 52 year old would be husband is out at the clubs trying to bag the 32 year old who's out here looking for a husband. Let's talk about it. So why can't the 45 year old with the short haircut, we, whatever the fuck she want to wear in her head, mm -hmm. why she can't be out here doing the same damn thing. Maybe it's because and maybe she's single because she just hasn't found the right one. Maybe she's single because the men in her age bracket, 52-year-old, three-time divorced men, is not out here pulling the weight. 
you're not bringing up a chair to the table. The men who she could be dating is out here on a fucking podcast and YouTube with no lights. No lights. <laughs> no equipment. Acting an ass on the internet. With the same suit on. If you know so much about women, like, just tell it, then you the bitch. Be the bitch if you know so much about women. I'm just saying, like, I am tired. At home baking cookies? At 45. At 45? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I like cookie, but. So, wait, okay. And I like what sis said at 36. So, at 36, is something just clicks where I just become. No. Fugly, a fugly slut. Mm. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what you're saying. I can't deal with the fit, with the fitness, with the lack of fitness. So instead of you literally just putting women to the side that are looking for love, and you, you know, instead of you saying, "Hey, boo, like let's start working out together, let's do things like that," nah, you're not good enough. That's crazy. Forty five, forty, and fine. When sh- is fifty and fine, which is a thing, and half of those chicks that be on TikTok and stuff doing that do have wedding rings on their fingers. Mm. Hmm. You would never know about that because you're too busy sitting mm. at the club, at the bars, on the couch with the thirty-two year old women. Yo, if I was a dude, I would be embarrassed right now. <sighs> like. Like, I was like, if you like legitimately follow like any of these guys and you listen to what they're saying and you take it to heart, like, mm. I really think you need to go to therapy or you need to talk to somebody. You need to talk to someone who really knows how to talk to women. Because these, these last examples that we just gave you, that's not it. At all. And I'm like, I'm embarrassed. Like, are you not ashamed of yourself? And it's like men with mics and it's not all men with mics. No. This is not for the kicking shit podcast, mm. the who next CLT podcast, mm. the the paid and exposure podcast. Mm. It's not for them. Mm-mm. It's not for them. It's for the ones who are out here, the fresh and fits of the world, the Kevin Samuels of the world. Um, that other podcast, I don't even know with this nigga with the beard podcast. Like it's for them. Because what is wrong with y'all? And then y'all, and you know what's funny? It's like, and then y'all be out here looking like wondering why you're still single mm-hmm. these women that might have been interested in you are seeing this yes you are on a digital worldwide platform they're seeing this how are you supposed to go and you could probably say like oh you know that's just for the show nah i think any woman the woman that you're trying to attract <laughs> and let me tell you if i was if a dude was talking to me and i saw that he was putting out this kind of content we're done. Absolutely not. Because you, if you say it out, that's damaging. Whether you believe what you're saying or not, that's damaging to the community. Right. And I don't fuck with that. That is not cool. That's not sexy. It's not fly. It doesn't get the girls hot. How no. am I supposed to walk around with you on my arm? You know, if somebody come out like, you know, I saw your podcast and you was talking about da 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 Now I'm on the side and, you know, they're like, sis, you good? You with this man? No. No. Call me an Uber. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I need, I need help. You know what I'm saying? Like. That's embarrassing. These men are insane. This shameful. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves, yo. I'm sorry. Like from that young man to that old ass man. There had to be like three generations we just looked at. Right. Oh my God. The one, the one that doesn't want the accomplished woman, the one who's gay bashing celebrities, mm-hmm. and the one that I don't even know. I mean, he was in the future video. So enough said. You know what? You are absolutely right. Toxic men attract toxic men, okay? Birds of a feather flock together because ugh, men with mics, ban them, ban them, put all the equipment in some, some green land bunker that they can't get to. Donate your equipment to us. We can use okay, it. Okay. Until you, until you can come correct <laughs> about talking about, and my thing is, especially with Sam, Kevin Samuels, I promise I'm done with it. Cause mm-hmm. I, I told sis, I was like, I'm over this shit. I can't. <laughs> it's the fact that like you sitting here, like. You're berating the woman that look like you. Like you sitting here gonna say, like, gonna say white women go to college to find a husband, and we go to college to prove that we don't need one. You fucking right, we don't need one. And that's also crazy because I know so many of women who I went to college with who got married who are black. So what are you saying? Where are you getting your statistics from? Because they're wrong. Ooh, you're loud and you're wrong. Shout out to the black woman that actually like graduated with their future husbands. They found each other in class. Yes. I know several Aggie couples out here 
thriving. There are many HBCU couples out here. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're berating the women that look like you. I don't see too many white men with podcasts out here talking about their homegirl. You know what I'm saying? The ones that look like them. They're not doing that. They out here talking about politics and shit. And that's perfectly fine. But y'all are out here berating the ones that look like you and then got the nerve to say in the next couple of years that you want a fucking wife. Fuck y'all. Not in this lifetime. You I'm sorry, grandma. I'm sorry. Cause it just, no, no I'm just I'm absolutely not. I'm with you all the way. Sis. The hell out of here, man. So yes. Whew. I hate them. I know. I know sis. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, with you. I'm with you. I hate that. It's just really embarrassing, yo. Like, and if we're wrong, like, say that we're wrong. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you feel type of way, like the black men, tell us that we're wrong. Like, but after what we saw, after what you saw today, are we wrong? Be honest with yourself. Okay. Seriously, we're not talking about you. We talking about them. Those examples we just gave, and the you. other ones with the mics that are currently trying to build podcast content. So, like. Because of things like this. Yes. They think, this. oh, this is a, a good way for them to get money now. So to, to to get on the mic and downplay your women. And shame on the brands that are actually giving them opportunity. Let's talk about that. Like, oh, this is this is toxic. You would think Kevin Samuels would have a men's warehouse uh, uh, sponsorship by now, but he wearing that same fucking suit. Men's, men's warehouse, I don't want to be a part of that garbage. Okay. Smart. Well... You all, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. We greatly appreciate it. Please remember to follow us um, on all of the things. Um, none of you left a review. so <laughs> on all the things. <laughs> I know, right? Every we, time you say this. We on all the things. Um, nobody left a review, so. Shame on y'all. Great way to start off Women's History Month. Ooh, damn. With disappointment. <laughs> damn. <laughs> well, Maybe well, they just been busy. All of them? All of you are They busy? have been leaving comments under the YouTube channel. Yes, they have. Those of you who, who watch on YouTube, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about you specifically who are listening. Damn. Yeah. The audio listeners, I'm talking about you. Damn. Yeah, this is directed towards you. Anyway, we are on a bunch of platforms. Follow <laughs> us on Twitter. We're on Twitter at uh, Head Rap Pod. We're on Instagram at Head Raps and Lipsticks. Check out our Facebook page, Head Raps and Lipsticks, the podcast. Go to our website, www.headwrapsandlipsticks.com. Um, we got a few more shirts left for sale. Sis made a cute design this past weekend. I was obsessed with it. I should have worn it today. I loved it. It's okay. Super cute. So, yes, slide into our email at hosts at headwrapsandlipsticks.com. Or you can DM, you can DM, DM us too. Yeah. And don't forget to DM us your grievance like Alana did today. I actually would like for y'all to participate in that. That's pretty cool. That would be dope. That would be a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah slide in the DMs, leave us a voice message. Um, remember, we are on a bunch of platforms, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Apple Play, Google, 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 Apple Play? Nope. Let's try it again. Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. YouTube, you guys are subscribing and commenting. I need y'all to share, 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 okay? Share with everybody. You know, just share it on your Facebook page. Give it out. And then just share it to everybody. Like, just go through your friends list and just share it with everybody, right. you know? Do a group group, Do a chat. group Yeah, group thing. Group chat. And that is it. No announcements today. Nope. Nope. Not this time. No. Not this time. Sis, what is the corny joke? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Why can't a leopard hide? Why? He's always spotted. <laughs> ah! I just, you know. <laughs> oh, shoot. Get it? No, I got it. You know what I mean? So like, I, yeah, I get it. It would be kind of hard for him to die. Because, like, I see. Okay. Bye, y'all. Bye.